presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are NC. It's been a great run for the Royals. They've won four straight series for the first time since May and have gone four and one on this trip to Minnesota and Detroit. Tonight, they will get greedy to get one more as they turn the ball to Jordano Ventura to complete the sweep against the Tigers. Royals baseball from Detroit, and while it's been a struggle on the road for the Royals this year, not here. They have a winning record at Comerica Park. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And some important numbers since July 31st. The Royals have a 3.22 starters ERA, one of the best in the league. The Royals are starting to score some runs, six runs per game on this road trip against Minnesota and Detroit. And how about this? Back to the break even point if they can complete the sweep against the Tigers tonight. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre. So most of the year, it's felt like maybe the Royals are trying too hard, trying to make things happen, and it just hasn't happened. And now, all of a sudden, they just look like the Royals again. Well, Ryan, they've been through a lot. The, the all-star break, the trade deadline, a lot of these players were wondering, is Dayton going to break up the nucleus of this championship team? Are we going to get traded? That bothered a lot of guys. I, Personally, it never bothered me as a player, but obviously it affected the Royals mm -hmm. and where they've been the last two seasons. So they're a very close-knit bunch. But look, they found them finding their DNA, the winning DNA, especially on the road. This is getting them back to 500. They can get the sweep today, step on their neck. Now they can get home tomorrow, look around, see the Minnesota Twins coming, and now it's time to get in the plus column again. Yeah, and we showed you how good the starting pitching has been. That's key for the Royals since the beginning of August. Specifically, in the last three games of this road trip, it's been outstanding. Jordano Ventura is next. this year 
against the Tigers. And while last night was exciting with the four home runs, man, let's look at the starting pitching in the first two games of the series. Man, that's exactly what we want, to see these starting pitchers competing against each other. That's right, it's internal competition that really feeds the rest of the team. That's what we're seeing. Kennedy, Duffy, now on to Ventura. And man, he's had some great numbers against Detroit. This is some good news here. Our Honda most trusted player because of these numbers. Bet you never know night to night for sure, but the confidence factor is huge for every major league player out there. You gotta have that going in. And Jordano knows he's dealt against him, and he also knows what Kennedy and Duffy did before him. Time to execute. And the four home runs are nice. Oh, wow, are you kidding? As he frustrated one of the best pitchers off Furlander, it's time to keep it going. Brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Every ticket you play gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. How about the weather on this trip? Middle of August, six games, and we have not had a game time temperature as warm as 80. Oh, it's been awesome. But look, it was heading that direction. Going to be, you know, upper 80s until that's that beautiful rainstorm came before the game and it dropped to 10 degrees. Nice. So the Royals are going for a sweep. We showed you they've been averaging six runs per game on this trip. And if the Royals can win tonight, they are back to 500, which I think would be a big relief. Oh, without a doubt. That, that's what you do when you, they've spent a month under 500 trying to just find themselves and claw their way back. And now that they're one game away, don't, don't stop now. And they're not going to stop after they get to 500, especially with Minnesota coming to town. They're going to be looking to add to the, in the plus column. There was a time when Anibal Sanchez was unhittable against the Royals. His first seven starts... The Royals either scored one or zero runs in each of those seven, but in his last four, his ERA is over six. And I remember, you know, analyzing those games and couldn't believe Sanchez went right through them. It was interesting to see his mastery with all those pitches, but he's lost some velocity. He doesn't have the same confidence, and he's been getting hit around. That fastball, he's going to use it, but he, he, he's not very confident with it. Split finger he's going to use to try to get guys to chase slider curve. Cutter. 
And our Golden Oak lending keys to the game is get back to even. That's what they want to do. A nice road trip so far. This is what we like. And pilot to bombardier. That's right. The four home runs last night, that was key. And Sanchez, he'll give them up. He's given up 23 home runs this year. That's second most from starters. So get them done. See if you can see him up and get him out of the park. Minnesota Twins had a tough time getting Paulo Orlando out in that three game series. And now Paulo is without a hit in this series. But he has still hit 364 on the trip. Fastball for strike one. Oh for eight in the series. He has walked one time and scored a run and had some hard hit outs. And Sanchez gets him to chase one out of the strike zone. Velocity's not overpowering. 88 to 93. He used to live around 94, 95. And that when you have that extra velocity, you can make more mistakes with it and get it by hitters. And we showed you the numbers and why they haven't been so good. It's because his velocity's down and he's been getting hit and the confidence is not there. So he's more of a finesse pitcher now. Grounded to Cabrera. Takes a bad hop on him, but he gets to the bag in front of Paulo, one away. So that's how we tell you that Miguel Cabrera is back in the lineup tonight. Yep. And good for the Tigers. Big hole when he's not in there. Ibar's getting his first start with the Tigers. He was dealt from the Atlanta Braves yesterday. And they're hoping he's a veteran, can fill in for the injured Iglesias, who's nursing a hamstring. Good player, veteran. He's in his 11th season. He's a big leaguer. And you saw most of his career with the Angels. I saw some of the early early days of it. And, and, you know, he was a little bit different then. Had more speed, a little bit more range. You know, like they all did when they were younger. But he's been to the playoffs and has experience. That's what they wanted. One strike on Chesler Cuthbert. And now no balls, two strikes. A rare bump in the road. For Chesler Cuthbert over the past couple of months. Hitting at just 174 on the trip. He hit his 10th home run of the season in the Minnesota series. Chasing a high fastball and it's still 0-2. Uh, you know as hot as he's been it's bound to happen. You just can't stay that hot. It's it's impossible that the league is well scouted. The advanced scouts are all hit at the games and you know they, they eventually find a weakness and they stay on the weakness. For Cuthbert, with two strikes now, they're trying to get him up. Give him a swing at that pitch above the belt. Just outside, according to home plate umpire Lance Barrett. Two and two. That's off the plate. Still two and two. He relies on Chase a lot, especially when he gets ahead. And you, you saw the five pitches that he throws, and there's what the righties and lefties have been doing to him. Right handers are having a lot more success average wise. But both sides of the plate can take him deep. Another foul ball. Generally speaking, it's not a hard rule. But when a righty's having trouble with right hand hitters or lefties against left hand hitters, doesn't that say something about the lack of effectiveness of his breaking ball? It sure does. That or, or change ups if he, if he has a, a consistent one. But, you know, his split change combination, he uses it just 16, almost 17% of the time. And he's leaving it up. Command issues. And here's Cuthbert again. Taking the count from one and two, actually from 0 and two to three and two. Sanchez strikes him out, but Sanchez really had to work to get it. And another long plate appearance for Cuthbert. 
It's always good, especially your first time up. Well, you've seen most of his arsenal, and, and he didn't want to challenge Cuthbert at all. He was ready. He's going to give him that walk. Ten pitches. How about that for your first plate appearance? You get to see ten pitches from the starting pitcher. Lorenzo Cain fouls it away. Lorenzo has seven hits in the Royals' last three games and two walks. So he's been on base nine times in the last three games and driven in five. You know, I thought it was very interesting what you brought up at the top of the broadcast. You know, here are the two time defending American League champions, the defending World Series champions. Nothing should bother them, but you really feel like that trading deadline was a burden. Yeah, and you know, we don't spend a lot of time in the locker room. I don't, anyway. It's, don't have any business in there. So we, we're, we don't really feel the heartbeat of the guys all the time and down. But I could just tell but when they come out of that locker room, they were really nervous around the All-Star break. I mean, after the break and, and the trade deadline that the rest of the month of July. And then, so they, they were tight and they weren't playing their kind of ball. And it, it, so Volquez, was, his name was mentioned a lot. He was really upset. He didn't want to leave. He wanted to stay. All these guys are happy with each other. They, they bonded over the last couple of seasons. They didn't want to leave. And then all of a sudden now they're, they're kind of letting all that go and they're starting to say hey all right we're here let's go what are we here for let's get back in this race we have the ability to do it every man pull for himself and we'll pull for others and that starting pitching has been a big difference well if that's true the Royals are 10 and 5 since the trading deadline that's the second best in the American League and they have been playing like they're supposed to play we don't see guys over swinging we don't see as many guys swinging at pitches out of the strike zone. Starting pitching has really settled down. And even with Davis and Hochaver out, the bullpen hasn't skipped a beat. Yeah, they've, they've all settled into their newfound roles. And Lorenzo Kane, you can tell he's seen a lot of pitches too. He's starting to get back to himself. This road trip, it's helped him. He's, he's hit some balls hard. He's had some long uh, at bats. Seeing more pitches is always a key for a hitter. And his success. The more you see, the better off you are. Look at it. He's getting close. 21 pitches for Sanchez to three hitters. Five games. He's coming alive. Foul tip and a strikeout. So Sanchez strikes out two. He gets the Royals in order, but the Royals received a lot of data facing Sanchez in the first inning. 22 pitches.
Royals are going for a sweep. Ian Kinsler is hitless in this series. And the Tigers, heart of the order, as we look at Kia in the driver's seat. Kinsler, Cabrera, Victor Martinez, Justin Upton have not driven in a single run, and those four have combined for one hit. Ibar will bat second in his first game with the Tigers. Miguel Cabrera is out. He left very early in the game on Monday. And Andrew Romine will play in center field. Whenever you can pull those hitters down like that, you're pitching. Oh. You're doing something. That's, this is a, a dangerous lineup. And start with this guy right here. It's easy to get all caught up with Miguel Cabrera. No balls, two strikes. And Cabrera's had some big games, big seasons against the Royals. But it always seems like when the Tigers win, this guy right here is right in the middle of it, offensively and defensively. There's no question. Outside at 98. Now Ventura, man, you know, very smooth delivery. It's amazing what he gets out of that windup. He, he looks so effortless. He's got three above average pitches. He's a Duffy from the right side. Tools wise, his pitches. Look at that bottom line in his last seven starts. And the way the offense has been going, no wonder he's been successful now. All depends on the run support. He's got 10 runs over his last two starts. That'll work. Got him with a curve. And Ian Kinsler is 0 for 8 in this series. There's that curveball. That's his strikeout pitch. Now, he likes to bury that in the dirt. He started about waist high and ends up in the dirt. But that one stayed up, but it was away and off the plate. Fastball curve change. Bottom line, you see that? 153 opponents average on that curve. That's fourth best in the American League. And he's got 63 strikeouts with that pitch out of his 101 punch outs. Changeup is outside, one and one on Eric Ibar. Acquired for Mike Avilas and a prospect, and then apparently the Braves immediately designated Mike Avilas for assignment. The old DFA. Not good. So Mike Avilas was traded to the Braves yesterday, sort of. Two balls, two strikes. Ibar's been around enough in the American League where he's faced. Giordano eight times, just one for eight. Switch hitter. That's to the gap. It's slicing, and that really helped out Alex Gordon. Slice right into Alex. Two down. Royals defense sponsored by Ford. Paulo Orlando started 11 of his last 12 in center field. And he's been excellent out there. I mean, he's really breaking the back of the hitters. I mean, they, they, they hit the ball on contact. They think it's going to be a gapper. And if it's got any air underneath it, he catches them. Been doing a superb job out there. And Lorenzo Kane in right is a center fielder playing right oh. field. There's not a lot falling. Liked how he was crashing the line last night. I mean, he, those balls just went into the stands, but he was over there covering it. A lot of right fielders can't get to those balls on the line out there. Cabrera, five for 16 off of Giordano. He walked and flied to center in the game on Monday and then came out with a left. Bicep strain. That last pitch was 99 with movement. Cabrera is one RBI away from 1,000 as a Tiger. Still one and two. Now how could the fans miss that ball? 
There was there was ten fans that they all had their gloves on and they let it go. They'll have another chance. Look at this right there. They, they all had, they had a shot at it. Change up. So Ventura matches Sanchez with two strikeouts in a one two three first inning. to begin the top of the second inning. He hit one of the four Royals home runs last night along with Raul Mondesi who hit his first big league home run. Alex Gordon and Kendry's Morales. Upstairs for ball one. Osborne 10 for 34 with a homer off of Sanchez in his career. Sanchez he's not interested in challenging hitters. Tell you that from the 22 pitches he threw to just three hitters. He's going to try to make him chase. He, he's going to have to come in there. You just got to wait him out. Last night it was a no doubter. Oh man, he got up underneath it. It was it hung in the air so long that, that we weren't sure exactly where it was going to end up. But sure enough, right below that second row of hedges out there. One ball, two strikes. Here are tonight's Kubota power stats. Four home runs for the second time this season. Eleventh time all time against the Tigers. See if he goes up on his toe with a little two strike approach here. And especially against a guy like Sanchez who's going to finesse. Try that split finger change up. Could go with a curve. No swing. Dale Scott with a bandage on his left forearm. Got that after a foul ball last night. We were working behind the plate. <laughs> it was a big old knot, wasn't it? Interesting. He went high leg kick for the. One two pitch and then no stride with the two two pitch. And that great double he hit in Minnesota. He just went up on his toe. So he he, he does it's a feel thing for him. Yeah, there he's putting the ball in play. Very casual by Ibar. One down. Ibar has a gold glove in his career back in 2011. Now his former teammate with the Angels. There was a time when the Angels had an all switch hitting infield. 
Sean Figgins at third. Eric Ibar at short. Mysiris Turris at second. And Kendrys Morales at first. Mighty Miser. He had a nice career. Mm -hmm. Sanchez has time. He'll take it to the bag himself. Hannibal Sanchez is now 32 years old. He is coming off one of the worst starts of his career. He has been very shaky. He has been very unpredictable. Sounds like you're talking about a young, inexperienced pitcher. When you start throwing the label, you don't know what you're going to get every time he takes the mound. Yep, that's not good for the Tigers. Season high, eight runs allowed, one shy of his career high, and a career high four home runs allowed at Texas. 86 pitches, four innings. And that was coming off two very good starts. Over the inside at 91. No balls, two strikes to Alex. Well, the bullpen are the guys that are coming to the ballpark saying, I better be ready because I could get in the game. Fouled away, still 0 and 2. Alex has a seven game hitting streak. At 217 batting average is his highest since the end of June. Inside, one ball, two strikes. That home run last night on a pitch like that that was up, it, it, it was a pitch that he wanted to hit hard, but to, to take a nice, easy pass and catch the back underside with that backspin was really nice. And it was deep. Like that swing there, he's taking the shot to left field. That's his key. Waiting on that ball and staying inside of it. So try to get him soft here. And he did. Sanchez has set down the first six, striking out half of those. Park Joel Goldberg here Royals pitching on a roll we talk about hitting being contagious same for pitching.
I think when guys go out there, you know, they they watch their, you know, they watch their teammate go out there and get their job done and, and, and compete like they're competing, and they don't want to be the guy that slips up and, 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 and ruins the role, so to speak. But, uh, you know, we, you ride this out just like you got you know you gotta you know gotta ride the hard times out too. But uh, everybody's feeling good about themselves, and and you know confidence is a beautiful thing in this game. You know, it, it really goes a long way. And and when you get confidence mixed in with the kind of talent we have, this is what you're going to get. That sounds a little like HUD there, Dave Island. Confidence is a beautiful thing. Here comes that ball. Here we'll let that one go. But when we talk about starting pitching, guys. Think about this last 12 starts for the Royals. They have had 10 quality starts. That's as many as they had all of last month. So pitching very well and indeed contagious. It's been a nice run. Sure has. But if but Dave was Island was was correct when, when it's that's that next night starter doesn't want to go out there and lay the goose egg. Deep to right field. And Victor Martinez puts the Tigers on the board. So that's the first RBI of this series, not just for Victor Martinez. But the combination of Martinez, Cabrera, Kinsler, and Upton. Caught it just right. Look at him. He coils and is very short with his swing. Good follow through. Keeps both hands on it. Great finish. 22nd homer. Now, J.D. Martinez. Breaking ball is high. We didn't. Include J.D. Martinez in the group of big bats that the Royals have held down. Although Martinez has not had a huge series, he's had three hits and one RBI. That's hit hard to right field, but Kane backs up and makes the play, backing onto the track. That expression right there is perfect. Just keep it steady and calm. Control those emotions. He's done a good job of getting over guys that hit homers. He doesn't get flustered. He's been getting better when the umpire squeezes him, showing his outward displeasure. He's doing a good job. Steady as she goes. Offensive could pick him up. Down and into Tyler Collins. One out of seven in the series. Ninety seven for a strike one and one. Collins is a dead pole hitter. He'll go to the opposite field if you make him but he's looking for that mistake out over the middle. Now we talked about Ventura and the mistake that he gave to uh, well, I don't even think that was a mistake. I think that's his great hit. The ball was down low that Victor Martinez took deep. When the umpire threw the ball back to him. He was nice and calm. Wasn't shaking his head. Didn't get flustered. You're going to give up home runs. That's part of the game. So he's watching it. He's hoping it stays in. But then once he knows it's gone, just give me another ball. No outward sign of being upset, which is really good. Because the hitters that are in the dugout aren't watching Victor Martinez run the bases. They're watching the reaction of Ventura. They want to get him hot. They want to see emotion. So when that happens, you, you get out of your game. Two down to Casey McGee. 98 with that fastball. No balls, two strikes on McGee. Tigers everyday third baseman with Nick Castellanos on the disabled list. One and two. And McGee made contact with that ball twice. There's Castellanos hit by a pitch on the hand and having 
the best season of his big league career. And McGee was picked up for some insurance purposes. You know, he's a veteran guy. Spent all season in Triple A. About 400 at bats. Cuthbert to Hosmer. So Ventura bounces back and gets the next three after the Victor Martinez home run. One nothing Detroit. Gives the Tigers a 1 0 lead to the third inning. And the Royals need quite a run to get back into the playoff hunt. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard shows us they're in good shape so far. Only the Mariners have a better record in the month of August. Royals will have Minnesota for a four game series and homestand beginning tomorrow, and then on the road to Miami and Boston next week. Tyler Duffy, Jose Barrios, Hector Santiago, Urban Santana. The Minnesota pitchers. Those are the, going to be the Twins pitchers up next. Escobar is hit in five straight. And he has hit 500 on this trip. 20 at bats, 10 hits. Three runs driven in. Off the end of the bat. Romine is in center field tonight. One out. And up comes Drew Butera. Ned Yost said before the game that it has been a coincidence that when Drew Butera has started recently, Giordano Ventura seems to be on the mound every time. But the timing is such that Ventura has pitched in quite a few day games after night games, and it's going to be a long night for the Royals tonight as they fly back to Kansas City. And so with that in mind, this was a good time for Ned to rest Salvador Perez. Two quick outs for Sanchez in the third inning. But in the end, if Ned isn't intentionally trying to put Butera and Ventura together, it doesn't hurt that Butera has seen a lot of Jordano Ventura. No, it's really good. Plus the fact that Ventura likes Butera, likes Salvi, and Butera knows that he's got to go out to the mound and calm him down at times. If he has to make 10 trips, he said he will. So he, he knows all about Ventura and his emotions sometimes get a little carried away. He's good at stopping. 
getting him back on his focus. Outside, one and one to Raul Mondesi. He hit the first of those four home runs last night, and it was his first. First major league home run, hit it off of Justin Verlander. Deep into right center field, Romine wants it. And that's a seven pitch, one, two, three, third inning. Sanchez begins by setting down the first nine Royals. Martinez home run on the topic of home runs last night. Royals villain Noah Syndergaard sure didn't look like a pitcher. First of all, he bats left handed. He's a right hand pitcher. And that was a home run of well over 400 feet. Our T Mobile greater coverage of baseball. Three home runs this year. Two of those came in one game. 415 feet last night. And an exit velocity of over 108 miles per hour. Impressive. You see that follow through? It looked like Will Clark. We were just talking about Will last night. Jose Altuve, fastest to 1,000 hits in Houston Astros history. Easy play for Paulo Orlando. He'll take care of James McCann. And Chase Utley, he got some ovation and he deserved it when he was first announced. In Philadelphia last night playing for the Dodgers and then he went on to hit two home runs. Yeah, he's an incredible baseball player. He's focused. He plays hard. I, I always loved his style. Very aggressive. And for him to go back to Philly where he helped them win a World Series, those fans, they'll never forget. Very passionate people there. They loved on him. They could care less about the score and what he did to him. He's one of theirs. It's very rare when a player gets a standing ovation and they acknowledge the crowd. And the ovation continues through that, and they have to acknowledge the crowd a second time. Romine singles to center field. And then, usually the hitter goes up there, and once they acknowledge the crowd, right. the crowd says, Thank you for acknowledging our ovation. They sit down, yeah. and it only got louder after that. Yeah, I mean, and that was when he was introduced his first time up. He took a call third down the middle, and then hit the homer, and then he hit the other homer, and they, 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 they gave him a curtain call every time. Feel good story. Man on for Ian Kinsler. He struck out on Ventura's curveball in the first inning. Found it off of his foot on the topic of second baseman and milestones with Altuve getting to 1,000 hits. We brought this up last time we were here. There are five second basemen in the history of the game. Five that have hit at least two home run, 200 home runs, and have at least 200 stolen bases. Five. 200 home runs and 200 stolen bases. 
and Ian Kinsler is one of them. Yep. The other four are Hall of Famers. Joe Morgan, Ryan Sandberg, Roberto Alomar, and Craig Biggio. Pretty impressive. He's in his 11th season. He's got a few more years left, some good years. He, he's got that pop, and he's got speed. He's got a, he pays attention to detail. He's a winner. Alex will make the play in left field. Two down. If you're a Royals fan and looking to attend the Kansas City Irish Fest, get your ticket for Irish Heritage Night at Kauffman Stadium, Wednesday, August 31st. This theme ticket package gets you both a ticket to the game to watch the Royals and the Yankees and a single day admission to the Kansas City Irish Fest the following weekend. Royals.com slash theme tickets. That should be fun. Breaking ball strike to Eric Ibar. I'm sure he's glad to be out of Atlanta. That just didn't seem to be a very good match. Ibar and the Braves after a trade with the Angels during the offseason. And yeah, we saw him earlier in the season when the Braves came to the game. Ventura got a little quick with that move. Romine will go to second and hold, then fan interference. Fan reached over and took the ball away from Hosmer. And now the first base umpire, Bob Davidson, who's been around for a long time, just all over that fan, quote, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Come on, Bob. He just reached over and caught the balls all he did. Only it was a live ball. That's it. Text everybody, let them know because there might be an usher leading that fan to the parking lot. Bob Davidson did not call a balk on that fan. <laughs> he just said, don't mess with a live baseball. He wanted to. <laughs> Bach and Bob, how would you like to be known? And he's in part a long time. He's got to be closing on 30 years. And he's known for when they enforced the Bach rule one year, he was the guy that called him all the time. Every game, he was looking for one. Thus, he became and known as Bach and Bob. And specifically, pitchers not coming set. Mm -hmm. 99, 3 and 2 on Ivar. For the record, this is his 28th season. Bob Davidson is a big league umpire. Ibar almost gets drilled. And that's a big walk because it puts two on for Miguel Cabrera. Looked like uh, Ventura might be trying to overthrow the ball a little bit, but then. Butera, like he said, he's going to go out there whenever he feels like he needs to go out there. You don't care if it's 10 or 15 times, whatever he's got to do to keep him focused and down in that zone. Ventura got Cabrera to swing at two pitches out of the strike zone in the first inning. Got him to chase a curve and then a changeup. And he struck him out with that changeup. Romine is at second, Ibar is at first. Change up is outside. Cabrera loves to go to the opposite field. Outfielders are playing him pretty much straight up. Follow a slight opposite field in center field. Line backhand stopped by Mondesi. That saved a run. Raul Mondesi with his soft hands picks a line drive, and Ventura has a scoreless third. 
Top of the order coming up. The Royals are still in search of their first runner against Anibal Sanchez. home safely. Yep live ball. You're not allowed to reach over and pull it up. He did this time you know and he probably wouldn't think it. It's coming right to him. Now he's trying to talk him out. Ball one to Paulo Orlando he grounded out to first in the first inning. Anibal Sanchez. Has opened with three perfect innings and three strikeouts. Oh. One and one. One little lousy singles all it takes. One and two. Yeah, let's, sh let's show you what the hitters have done first, second, third time. Now we're just starting the second time through in the Royals lineup 277, 298. They missed out on the first time through. It's got a high average against there at 312. Right where McCann wanted it, but inside. Two and two. A reminder as you enjoy a cold one. Look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Gonna try and come inside again. Check the swing. Bob Davidson says no swing. The league's trying to figure out, Paulo. They, they, they see where he gets most of his hits up the middle so they're, they're reluctant to leave anything out over or up so they're trying to jam him inside have him hit little ground balls at the third baseman shortstop. It's not easy when you're going good they're going to try to figure out a way. But they make mistakes and that's what hitters live off of. Change up. Tried to get him with a fastball in. Tried to get him with a breaking ball. And when those didn't work, Sanchez went with his changeup and has his fourth strikeout. Fans of the Royals and Fox Sports Kansas City are offering a unique way for fans across the Midwest to enjoy a game at Coppin Stadium. It's the 
Forever Royals Fan Express. Fans in designated markets will have the opportunity to win a trip to the K. Final stop is August 20th in Des Moines. Go to Royals.com slash Fan Express for more information. Sanchez got Cuthbert with a changeup, like he just got Orlando. That was back in the first inning. Oh. Off speed again, and it's 0-2. And, and they're having a hard time with Sanchez. You can tell they don't look sure, they don't look very confident up there. Sanchez, nice slow tempo. Using those five pitches. Same thing. He's been good, getting ahead of these guys. What you got to do when a guy's getting ahead of you, look early in the count, move up in the box a little bit, look for something out over, and be aggressive, swing it. Get down 0 2. Guy with all those pitches, it's going to be tough. This is almost identical at bat as the previous time he was up there. Same thing. Fell behind 0-2 and, and ended up getting a three to two count and milked ten pitches. Five strikeouts. And four with his changeup. Breaking ball is high. Two and zero on Kane. Kane went down, swinging at a fastball. Two and zero. Let's see if Sanchez tries to come with a fastball. Now, guys that don't have overpowering fastballs sometimes will use a secondary pitch. He went around. He, he wishes he would have swung at that. That ball was a good pitch to hit. Lorenzo hasn't homered since May 31st. He is way due for a homer. Let's see what kind of pitch he gets here. Three and one with Hosmer on deck. Sanchez has yet to give in to a hitter. Using all three of his pitches. He challenged him 2 0. Oh. He's going to come back in there again. That was not where it was supposed to be, but Sanchez got away from it. Fastball was supposed to be down and away, it was up and in, and Kane just missed it. So Anibal Sanchez, with his 6.3 ERA, has set down the first 12 Royals tonight.
Baseball Sanchez. The umpires, they're not always perfect. That's where we have instant replay. So if you're Billy Duplissy, I say this like if you don't want to see the results of something, turn away. Just turn the channel, Bill Duplissy, for the next 30 seconds. Because he right now is someone we want to talk about. He runs the Royals instant replay last night. No pickoff. But yes, go to replay. And of course, Billy Duplissy got it. Eight straight successful challenges. Best success rate in the league. That is our Toyota League leaders. As we're going to see the leadoff from Victor Martinez, who so far has had Jordano Ventura's number tonight. But how about Billy Duplissy with eight straight? He is money. Hud talks about him every single night. But I am told that he does not know exactly what the streak is. And that's why I said turn away, because he's a baseball guy. He's going to be superstitious. He does like the new nickname, and I told him how cool to be called the connoisseur and how cool that Hud learned a new word. <laughs> well, Rhino teaches me many things up here, Joel. I learned from you, too, and Monty. Three-syllable word at that. Yeah, but that's a that's a word that fits for him. Hope it continues. Good job, Joel. Curveball high to J.D. Martinez. Victor Martinez, who just singled. Homered in the second inning. That's our only run tonight. And then Martinez followed that with a line drive to the warning track in right field. One ball, one strike. One of the other great signs of Ventura and his maturation is the 14 ground ball double plays he's induced. And that's a good sign. He's not up there trying to blow hitters away and sometimes he is in certain counts but he'll pitch that defense that's up the middle two on nobody out he's been aggressive swinging in this series he's not having a lot of hits but he, he's been swinging early in the count and just nearly missed Ventura there Got a little frustrated. So one of the trips to the mound for Drew Butera. Sometimes trying to find an alternative to the word lie or liar. Sometimes a catcher has to bend the truth when they go out to the mound. That's right. Steve Kurtenbach, our director, suggests that maybe a catcher needs to fabricate the facts. But there are times Drew Butera needs to go out when Ventura gives up a hard hit ball and say, you know what? That wasn't a bad pitch. That was the right pitch. Give him credit. You didn't make a mistake. Got to find a way to. Stay positive when something negative happens. That's right. Drew's good at it. You know, right there, just a little body language of pointing his glove at Ventura after that swing. Good job, right? Does it again, pumps a fist. Yeah. Keep him, well, he may not be happy right now. Keep him thinking that he's doing a good job. Yep, and, and like everything you, we do, you're not going to be successful all the time. He is there with a high fastball, good pitch. But in this sport here is a lot of negatives and it's a tough game to survive. So you've got to be able to be positive. There was good hard fastball right by a hot tempered Collins. So two on one out to Casey McGee who would be a double play candidate. And he grounded out to Cuthbert in the second inning. Fair ball. Out at second, and they almost did it. Almost turned a double play, which began on a diving play at third by Cuthbert. Beautiful. Key frustrated. Can't find a hole. Cuthbert closed that one down the line quickly. Mondesi, like it, aired it out. That's what Mike Jersley wants him to do. Show that great arm at second base when you're throwing across the diamond and making a double play attempt.
First and third, two down to James McCann. Change up for strike one. Ventura rushed that pitch to the plate. Perhaps catching McCann off guard. And it's 0 and 2. Does he stay with that fastball up or does he drop the hammer on him here? He'll stay with the fastball. 209 hitter. Yep. Perhaps overthrew that pitch. Yeah, and you know, Dave Island was telling me that Yoradano Ventura is one of the best on the whole starting staff that's able to recognize what he's doing wrong. The shoulders flying out on a pitch just like he did to there. He'll look into Dave and Dave will make just one little movement and, and he'll he'll pick it back up again. So he's really learning about his pitches. There's an off speed pitch. Yeah, 90. Yeah, wow. What's that? So two on, nobody out. Ventura gets a strikeout. He gets a nice play from Cuthbert and another strikeout. Fifth inning, Tigers up one nothing. Watching that double play that, that Montesi was trying to turn brought back some memories. Now watch him. Now he's he the Royals did not play him at second base this year. He's been playing shortstop. So for them to call him up and, and put him at second base, he's having to go through a lot of adjustments. I my first five years as a pro player, I was at short, they moved me to second, and it's totally different. It's opposite. Everything at short stops to your left and in front of you. Second base is to your right and making throws across your body. So he's going through a major adjustment period and he's making it pretty easy. He's looking good because he has such good skills. But Mike Jershley said he wants him to stay in his legs, stay keep his legs underneath him. And what he means by that is when you when you're guarding somebody with a basketball, you're going to get into position, you're going to get into your legs so you can be able to move left and right. That's what he wants him to do on his throws. And he wants him to continue to utilize Escobar, work together, but, but throw that hard, that, that, that arm, show that arm off. And he's improving. One and two on Hosmer. Say what you want about the new slide rule, but it sure comes in handy when one of your top prospects is learning to play second base at the major league level. That's right. That last play there, that's as close to contact as we've seen in a while. A little bit outside, McCann 
held it out there a little longer. So the second base or the home plate umpire Lance Barrett to get a long look at it. Full count. Royals have yet to have a base runner against Sanchez. He has retired the first 12 with five strikeouts. And yet it's still just a one nothing game. Lead off walk. Fans didn't like it. Sanchez didn't like it. He hit the target. The question is where was the target. Was it in the strike zone. Nope. Oh, it was off. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. And Sanchez is still fuming. This is a good thing for the Royals. Number one, they have a base runner. Number two, Sanchez is angry. And number three, we bring this up all the time when a pitcher has several perfect innings and hasn't pitched out of the stretch yet. This could be an adjustment for two or three hitters. Fastball for strike one. Morales grounded back to Sanchez, who took it to the bag himself in the second inning. Forget to vote for the Royals Player of the Month at one of the seven Rally House locations in the KC metro area. All participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. It's got a swing Morales wants. That's going to make the stance. He wants to stay inside of that ball here. He doesn't want to. Roll up into a double play. He's already grounded into 15. Sanchez trying to get him inside. He missed. A pitch that comes inside and you try to pull it, and if it's down, you, that's exactly what you're going to do. Roll it over into a double play. Morales knows looking for something up. Double play depth. Infielders are. By McCann that keeps Hosmer at first base, two and two. So all three pitches of or four pitches of all of them, he's tried to get inside on him. And you know, if you're a hitter, you know he's coming in there. He, you're going to start looking in there. Sometimes you'll open up your hip a little bit, your, your right foot, just like he's doing there. It already opens those hips just a tad, so you can be quicker in there. And he got him with a change. It's been a great pitch for him tonight. Mm -hmm. Pulled the string on it. Fastballs in. Got him pull happy and then put it away. That's a, that's a great job of setting him up. Alex struck out on a changeup in the second inning. Six strikeouts for Sanchez, five with his changeup. I thought for sure the Royals offense would have gotten to him by now. Good news is Ventura's off to a good start, so Sanchez is one mistake away from the Royals taking the lead. That's right. And he has given up 23 home runs this season. Hosmer runs. The pitch was up. And Hosmer came off the bag. Dan Isonia, second base umpire, left his original position and ran around Ibar. So Hosmer may have beaten the throw, but then was off the bag. We'll see. McCann throwing out 50% of runners. He's good. Short hop pick by 
Ibar, yeah, he was off the back. Ibar with good hands out there, picking it. A little bit low, two and one. To change two balls, two strikes. It's, it's a split finger changeup grip, and it just acts like a like a split finger changeup pitch. I mean, it, it goes down and away. That's what you want. So he's not going to split the fingers all the way. He's just going to split some of them and keep them in the back three fingers. On the ball. Full count. There's the grip. That's his his most effective pitch, especially when he gets two strikes on guys. That's what he's going to. Another walk. So Sanchez has yet to give up a hit. He has walked two in this fifth inning after retiring the first 12. Here's our sprint trivia question for tonight. Alex Gordon is one home run shy of his eighth season. With 10 or more home runs. Name the three Royals with eight or more seasons of 10 or more home runs. Loop to right center. JD Martinez takes charge and makes a play. So the Royals get their first two base runners. Sanchez has held the Royals hitless and scoreless through five innings. One nothing Detroit on Victor Martinez home run back in the second inning. Nine one and two hitters are coming up for the Tigers. Andrew Romine missed a fastball riding away from him. No balls one strike. Romine 
Single to center in the third inning. Went to second on an air by Ventura and was stranded there. Curveball makes it 0 and 2. Romine's a nice utility player. He can play all infield spots. And now, recently, the last couple of seasons, they've been showing him in the outfield. Ouch. Lance Barrett, the home plate umpire, was yelling that Romine was still in the box when he made contact with it a second time. Like that off the plate, it hit his hand. Just foul outside of third. I would imagine with just only the catching position, one left that Romine hasn't played in the big leagues, and someday he'll talk a manager into letting him back there. We've already done eight, that's good. He pitched at the K back in June. Good curve. One down, five strikeouts for Ventura. And it's time for a premier Mazda game break. Bryce Harper, 481 feet later. Well, that that tells you how far it is right there because the the cameramen in each city they know their ballpark better than anyone. They know where most home runs are going to land, mm -hmm. and that cameraman or woman was expecting that ball to descend into the bullpen in right center field but it ended up in the second deck that's the fourth longest home run hit in the major leagues this year and the first longest was there too right was that Stanton hit that in there well I'm sure it was Stanton somewhere yeah Colorado is thin air ball really flies I believe that's where Stanton hit it Ian Kinsler is struck out and line to left. Three and zero. Oh. Fouled away on three and zero. Oh. That was August sixth where Stanton. Hit the 495 foot homer in Colorado. Left center. Stanton has the second longest, too, 490. Inside for a walk. That's the best that Kinsler has done so far in this series. Reach for the walk. That's Ventura's second. And the Royals. Down one nothing. We have Kinsler at first base with Ibar and Cabrera coming up. Ibar was the first Tiger to walk against Ventura. He's also flied out to left field. Ibar was really struggling when the Atlanta Braves were in Kansas City in May. First year away from the Angels, his original organization. He has picked it up since, especially since the All Star break. That made him more attractive to the Tigers. No balls, two strikes. He has spent time on the disabled list this year. Had a problem with his right foot. There you go. Hitting a little more than 100 points better in the second half than he did in the first. One and two. He also had to miss a game. This is a first for me. He had to miss a game in May. Apparently at lunch he got a chicken bone stuck in his throat and had to be sedated 
so that they could get it out wow. which could be very serious but you could imagine with the season he was having for the Braves the jokes that came out of that oh. Cuthbert throws him out Kinsler goes to second base that would turn you into a zombie yep you don't get that chicken bone out of your throat in time <laughs> then you qualify for zombie night That's right. at Coffin Stadium on Friday it is a night of the undead, but make sure you're dressed in your best family-friendly zombie attire and makeup, or you can get your face painted at Coffin Stadium. If you purchase the theme ticket package, you receive a one-of-a-kind, and the picture proves it, a one-of-a-kind Royals zombie figurine. Royals.com slash theme tickets. Runner at second for Miguel Cabrera. Curveball hangs high. Cabrera struck out in the first inning and then hit a shot in the third inning. And Mondesi made a very nice backhanded play and threw him out. So Cabrera's 0 for 2. Two balls, no strikes. Giordano looks like he's falling off pretty heavy to the right side. His shoulder's coming out a little bit, and he's missing up and in. And I think Drew's going to go talk to him. Good time to he's getting the balance. Uh, his, his mechanics a little bit off. Get that shoulder going north and south. Come right to me. Let's stay down. Have him hit it on the ground to somebody. Up. And he struck him out with that pitch in the first inning. I think he's shaking his left arm a little bit. I wonder if he, that biceps tendon still bothering him. And I bet it hurts more when you swing and miss. It sure does. And swing and miss at an off-speed pitch. Yep. On the ground, a deep short. Escobar has time. And the inning is over. Ventura has allowed just one run in five innings. Weather on this entire trip 75 degrees at first pitch tonight one run that's it in five full innings Victor Martinez leading off the second inning against Giordano Ventura inner half good easy swing but he had some lift to it 22nd on the year. 
On the other side, the Royals are without a hit in the first five innings against Anibal Sanchez, who set down the first 12 Royals. Then the Royals got two walks in the fifth. Drew Butera leads off. And a breaking ball is in for strike one. Drew fouled out to the first baseman Cabrera in the third inning. Sanchez is looking like he did for the first seven starts in his career against the Royals. He's looking a lot like that with it. Yeah, I feel like we've seen this before. <laughs> right. And he was uh, five and two with a 1-0-7 ERA. No homers allowed. And in those seven starts, he only allowed one run. Still 0 and 2. Butera leads off our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is Bobby Sue Jackson from Overland Park. If the Royals hit a home run out of the park in this inning, Bobby Sue wins $1,800. A grand slam out of the park is worth 25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. Strike three over the outside. Seven strikeouts for Sanchez in five and a third innings. Sanchez came to the Tigers back in 2012. His numbers were okay, Marlins and the Tigers combined. In 2013, that ERA, that was the best in the league. He was hurt quite a bit in 14, and then the worst season of his big league career was last year with a 4.99 ERA, and that ERA was and is over six coming into tonight and the Tigers still have him signed for another year for big bucks. Yeah sure he sure doesn't look like a pitcher with a six ERA. He's hitting his spots. Hmm. Mondesi flied to right first time up and now pops it up into a combination of a light blue and pink sky and Cabrera right at the entrance to the Royals dugout makes a catch two down. He knew where he was all along right there in the opening. Beautiful night. It was a warm and muggy night when we arrived here from the team hotel. And then that thunderstorm blew through and took all the humidity with it. Paulo Orlando is out. And now six no hit innings for Anibal Sanchez. He needed just eight pitches to get the Royals in the sixth.
nothing Tigers thanks to that man Victor Martinez who homered in the second inning around the league brought to you by Panera Bread the Blue Jays beat the Yankees Toronto already had a one game lead going into tonight the Astros lose Houston was nine games back in their division Cleveland and Chicago are tied in the top of the fifth inning Yordano Ventura is down one nothing but he's pitched well he's given up one run four hits two of those hits to Martinez Martinez homer to right and then in a second at bat he singled to center. Oh, he's doing his job and so is Butera keeping an eye on him. He's made three trips to the mound so far in this one. One ball, two strikes. Hey, hey, hey. What are they doing over there in that dugout? They're trying to get a little rally mantis going in their dugout? Nice pitch. Is that their own mantis or has the Royals Mantis abandoned the Royals? I don't know. That's Mike Pelfrey, who grew up in Wichita. Went to Wichita State. Tiger pitcher is on the disabled list right now. J.D. Martinez is one for two. Up the middle and pass Escobar. Two hits for J.D. Martinez. <laughs> Ventura has only had one one two three inning all night but you've never really had the feeling that he's been in any kind of trouble. No he, he's been able to make his pitches when he's had to. He's executed. So we've been a few runners in scoring position tonight but his last four starts. He's held opponents to a two for 18 with runners in scoring position so he's executing when he needs to. Outside to Collins. He is grounded to second and struck out against Ventura. 81 pitches for Yordano and five in the third. Oh. Got the call, two and one. That call. Two and two. <laughs> Drew tried to help him with it. As I say, he got the call. Yeah, he did. You know, Collins, he, he's a little volatile his temper. Ooh, ouch. That's a tough man right there because that made the sound like it hit his bat. I mean, you could hear the crack all the way up here. That's neat. Mm. Ball on the bone. He's he's complaining about the the umpire and the pitches right there. The Hosmer. Does he finish this game on the field? Uh, I don't know. He may be standing yeah. on adrenaline right now, but it's got kind of temper. So two on, one out. And a nice backhand stop by Butera. Casey McGee is grounded out to Cuthbert twice. 
tried to get him to a ground into a double play. That last time up. One and one. Tyler Collins looks okay right now at first base. But in a couple of innings after standing in left field and that leg starts to swell up. I mean he we use this word a lot but it applies to that pitch. He got drilled. Oh. One and two. And I uh, got him on the side of the knee. If it gets his kneecap he's not getting up. So he. But he popped right up. There's the ground ball. Escobar takes it himself. And this time around, Ventura gets the double play from McGee. A single and a hit batter. Ventura works around it. Still 1 0 Tigers to the seventh. Like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite and Annabelle Sanchez. Dealing. Six hitless ah. innings tonight. 88 pitches, seven strikeouts. His little change up split finger combination is working. He's getting ahead of hitters. He's done a nice job of keeping them off balance. Came off that last inning, crowd gave him a nice ovation. They're not used to seeing him come off the field with, with no runs, but. Alone, no hits. Well, this is when it becomes serious stuff when you're pitching into the seventh inning. That breaking ball stayed up there. Not been many pitches like that available to the Royals. And this is not the Royals over swinging. This is Sanchez pitching. The Royals do have two walks. So they've had a couple of base runners. One and one on Cuthbert. Twice Sanchez has struck him out with changeups. Now he does have two 20 pitch innings but he's been able to balance that with a couple of single digit pitch innings on the ground to Ibar one out in the seventh Sanchez has thrown a no hitter in his career it was his rookie year 10 years ago pitching for the Marlins he no hit Arizona it was just his seventh major league victory. How about that? And he was rookie of the year for the Marlins. Miguel Olivo, former Royal, was his catcher in that game. And in his career, he has lost two other no hitters in the ninth inning. Yeah. Well, his pitch count could hurt him. He's thrown as many as 100 just two starts ago, but, but, but that's the most. Now, he, he did throw 114 back in April, but. 
Osmus will lead him in all the way. We'll see if he's keep dealing like he's dealing now. It'll be up to Sanchez. No, oh, there's the answer. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine the reaction if Brad Osmus takes out Sanchez without giving up a hit? One and two. Man, he has just lived on the edge of the strike zone all night. The other issue that Brad Osmus has is that as well as Sanchez is pitched the Royals are one base runner away from bringing the go ahead run to the plate. Right. It's tight. This is a tough, tough time when you're managing right now as it doesn't get any easier. Strikeouts. You can get closer to the action at Coffin Stadium with our Royals Memories program. Choose amongst a variety of unique opportunities, such as a photo on the field, watching batting practice, and delivering the game ball. All experiences are available for purchase each game through the MLB.com ballpark app. Left field well hit and off the fence. So the no hitter has come to an end and the Royals have the time runner in scoring position. Sanchez goes six and two thirds without allowing a base hit. Yep, it looks like a cutter or a little slider up the top of the zone. Haas loves that pitch up there. Tyler Collins, the left fielder, he just turned and looked. And the way he looked, it looked like it might have been out of the ballpark, but he hit the base of the wall. There you go, he's got some action now. Fastball is high. Sanchez is a veteran. He's been here before, but there's always a bit of an emotional letdown this late in the game, giving up a first hit. Around 100 pitches, tiring a little. Perfect opportunity for Morales. Change up makes it one and one. Kendrys has grounded out and struck out. Up. And McCann brings it down to end the inning. So Sanchez <laughs> congratulates Hosmer. Hosmer congratulates Sanchez. He has pitched seven shutout innings and does not allow his first hit until two outs in the seventh.
chances of Anibal Sanchez throwing a no hitter. Sanchez a good sport acknowledges Hosmer's two out double and then gives Hosmer a hug. Well you know what it's a different era. That's all I can tell you it's changed. But look I think the tip of the cap was what was fine but you know they, they happened to cross pass and it happened. Can you imagine if Melky Cabrera had broken up that. <laughs> no hitter. That would have been a love fest. Yeah, you might have had to, you know, <laughs> cover the kids' eyes. <laughs> uh, it's a much friendlier game. Maybe that's that's oh. not good. I don't know. One nothing Tigers on a Victor Martinez home run in the second inning. McCann, Romine, and Kinsler. 90 pitches for Ventura. Nobody is warming up in the Tiger bullpen. That's a strikeout. And McCann is going to reach. A lot of room behind home plate in this ballpark. And if it rolls and stops at the base of the wall, just about anybody in the league is going to reach. It's unfortunate. I don't know how catchers can handle Ventura anyway with with all that movement he's got on his pitches the breaking ball the change up is and he's got life to that fastball mid to upper 90s could be tough. Romine bunts and Ventura gets it to Hosmer. Still the top of the order is coming up with McCann at second base and one out. So all the focus tonight is on Sanchez with six and two thirds without allowing a base hit and he's given up just one hit in seven innings. But Giordano Ventura has allowed one run on five hits in six and a third innings. He has walked two. Matt Strom warms up in the Royals bullpen. Tigers are 0 for 6 for the runner in scoring position so far tonight. And Ian Kinsler, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but he is hitless so far in the series. No, that's a good thing. Now, Ventura continues to execute his pitches and puts it where he wants to. He can get him out again. Good, good in, but you got to go way in. Because he looks in there, but you can get him in with that hard fastball. Over seven with two walks in the series. But if you add in tonight, it's over nine with two walks in the series. Foul ball. One and two. That one stayed up. Hung up there a little bit for him. Breaking ball, he's out in front of it, just barely. Tim Jeppy waited on. Not long enough. McCann struck out, but reached on a wild pitch and was bunted to second by Romine. Do, especially heading the count one and two. And that just gets him closer to Miguel Cabrera. And it gets Ned Yost out of the dugout. Eric Ibar, a switch hitter, is coming up. And Ned Yost wants him to bat right handed. So a frustrating way for Ventura to end the night, but another good night for him. Yeah. Hey Ventura, man, nothing to be shameful about. That was an outstanding job against the tough hitting Tigers. Matt Strom is a Chevy call to the bullpen.
Royals baseball is brought to you by your local Kansas City area Chevy dealers. Visit for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. By Panera Bread, food as it should be with 24 KC Metro locations. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. Tigers will see Matt Strom for the first time. Ibar takes a strike. Two on, one out. Giordano Ventura goes six and a third innings. He is responsible for the two runners. And two gifts. McCann reached on a strikeout wild pitch, and then Kinsler was hit by a pitch. A little bit high. Strong, one and one. Strom not going to mess around. Low to mid 90s with his fastballs. Really good, sharp breaking slider. And an occasional changeup. On the ground to Cuthbert. Tough hop. And the bases are loaded with one out. Yeah, ball ate him up. There he is, using his legs as getting ready. And the ball, it, it, it took a high hop and did exactly what I said. It ate him up. It got to him. He, he didn't expect it to take that high a bounce. At least he stayed in front of it. Knocked it down. An error. Wow. Tough error. Brooks Beltre is our official scorer tonight. Yeah, right. Bases loaded, one out. Strom against Miguel Cabrera. One ball and no strikes. Cabrera's grounded into a team leading 18 double plays. Strom, fly ball pitcher, that good hard fastball. Sharply hit. Out at second, double play. Matt Strom gets the job done. There you go. Nice job, Giordano. We ended up giving up one run. What a night. Strom did the job. 19th double play right at him. Now get him some runs. Double play for Miguel Cabrera with the bases loaded one out and it's still one nothing to the top of the eighth inning. All right our trivia question Alex Gordon one home run shy of eight seasons 
with 10 plus home runs. There are three who have already accomplished that. I'm going to guess. You got one? Amos Otis. All right, I'm going to go with Mike Sweeney and George Brett. Al McRae. All right. We'll give him one. That's kind, of, that's kind of a win, isn't it? We got I two think out so. of three. Justin Wilson is now pitching for the Tigers. And Alex Gordon on one pitch ties the game. Wow. That, that brought me out of my seat. That was a blast. And you can imagine the reaction from the crowd. Anibal Sanchez did not allow a hit until two outs in the seventh inning. He had pitched seven shutout innings, and his replacement throws one pitch, and we're tied at one in the eighth. Oh, I like it. I think Alex heard us talking about him in the sprint trivia question. Way to go. First pitch, he Tommy hocked it. Tenth homer for Alex. There you go. Some life now. I mean, this first pitch right there. I mean, in too. It wasn't like it was a, a pitch that was out over the middle of the plate. His quick hands was able to barrel it. Pulled him in nicely. So he joins that group of Royals we were just talking about. Yeah. And another base hit for Alex tonight. He is hit in eight straight. How about that? Good timing, fellas. Right on cue with a question. That ball jumped out of here in a hurry. So your starting pitcher goes seven innings. He gives up one hit, no runs, and ends up with a no decision. Escobar had a home run rip. Wilson. He's got a good fastball. He'll go low to mid with it. Well, watch this now. Just picks up that foot. Head position again. Never moved. Just great hands. Just pulls his hands inside to get the barrel on it. If you wrap around it, you hit it off the end of the bat, and it doesn't go anywhere. Perfect swing. Justin Wilson, 93 to 96 with a cut fastball. Curve change. We didn't even have a chance to give him his vitals in his 49th game. Most of five ERA, 4.53. But what's his heart rate and his blood pressure? Man, he, he didn't like to hear that crowd. I don't know if the crowd was booing him or the manager. Probably both. So I ask you again, HUD, will Tyler Collins finish this game in left field? Well, like you analyzed, it once this things start swelling up a little bit it's going to get stiff he'll be coming out he called it because when you hear that like we heard it <laughs> it was it hit him squarely I hope he's all right Tyler Collins was hit by a pitch back in the sixth inning by Ventura right on the outside of the knee and it sounded like a ball hitting a bat No problem. Look at him masking yeah, the paint. No, no problem right now. Right. I like that though. He, he, he didn't even let Ventura know he heard him. Escobar is 0 for 2. Those well, last two swings, he's just trying to lay it out there to right field. And that wouldn't be a bad idea. Get a man on. Got a bonus home run with nobody, with no outs. Set up that table again. Caught by McCann, one down. 
MLB.TV Premium is the number one live streaming sports service. Watch every out of market game live in HD at home, in the office, or on the go. Get real time highlights, live look ins, pitch by pitch tracking, and more. MLB.TV Premium also includes a free at bat premium subscription. Blackout and other restrictions apply. McGee plays the second hop. Butera is out to away. Alex Gordon sitting next to Matt Strom and Ryan Stoneberg, Royals strength and conditioning coach. Strom looks like he's going to be going back out there for the eighth inning. You'll get Victor Martinez, J.D. Martinez, and Justin Upton. Wearing something that has become a lot more familiar these days, and that is players in a game where you typically don't associate a mouth guard. But unlike the other sports where it's protecting your mouth, that's relieving tension, right? That's right. It's a, it's they're great. I, I wish they had them when I was playing. It's, you know that wear and tear, and you're out there grinding. You're, you know, he's he was telling me that he was he had a spot up around his. Yeah. Fair ball. Will Mondesi dig for three? He will. Upton had some difficulty digging it out of the corner. And now Upton's going to hear it from the home crowd. He's at third base with two down. Oh, man, he's, he's sliced that ball. Oh, he hooked it by the bag. Right side, he hooked it. That ball's in. Had a little downward swing to it, kept it down, rifled it right by McGee. Now watch this team get causing Upton some problems out there. He waited for it before it bounced off the first wall, and then he, he thought it was going to kick to him, and it did. And then when he did, it got cut up under the wall. Osmus is coming out. And Osmus heard a few boos when he came out to get Justin Wilson. So the go ahead run is at third base with two down. Paulo Orlando is coming up. And Shane Green takes over on the mound. In the eighth inning, Mondesi hit, hitting right handed, hooked it by the back. He knew he had a double right away. Okay, you know that, you see that. Now he's keeping his eye on the ball. Upton didn't get to it, he just kept going. Look at that, barely even slowed down. And just was to second to third in a heartbeat. He was, I mean, it probably took him three seconds to get to third. He, he was on it. Love the energy he's bringing. It's fun to watch somebody who has that gift to run like that around the bases. Now they can get him in with two outs to be a beautiful thing. Paulo's due. Paulo is 0 for 3 tonight. 
And that got McCann. You say Paulo's due. He is hitless in this series. First pitch breaker. Curveball got him right off the knee. Shane Green, 92 to 94, was sinking fastball. He, he's got a cutter, slider, curve. Occasional changeup. That's when he was starting. Now he's out of the pin. He's probably simplifying it. Your fastball, curve, slider. Follow a 338 hitter coming into this game with a runner in scoring position. Back to back breaking balls. 0 oh 2. Alex Gordon homered to lead off this inning that tied the game. And with two outs, Mondesi hits the triple. Grounded out to Kinsler. Inning over. But the game is tied. The first pitch thrown by anyone other than Anibal Sanchez tonight ends up in the right field seats. Gone. Tenth on the year. Nice stroke. Second, Alex Gordon homered in the eighth. Here we are, tied at one in the bottom of the eighth. If the Royals win, they will sweep the series. Matt Strom came on in relief of Jordano Ventura in the seventh inning and got a double play against Miguel Cabrera with the bases loaded. Martinez fouls it away. He is homered, singled, and struck out. Yeah, well, you're talking about Strom's mouthpiece earlier. He said he had a pain in his shoulder right above, above his left arm, and and when he when he started pitching with that with that mouth guard and, and, and clinching down on it with his teeth, the pain went away. So it, so it's, it is a stress reliever, and he likes it. He says it really makes me feel good. I don't. It's not like my teeth are. If it's not hard, it's a soft substance. You have to go through two or three of them a year. And the, the hitter, Victor, he, he's got one too. He wears. So tension in the jaw leads to tension in the neck, which right. leads to tension in the shoulder. Exactly. That's when you're out there grinding. Takes one off the mask.
Right away, snaps off, takes the mask, inspects it, makes sure there's nothing fractured or broken there on the bar. Let's everybody know he's all right. One and two. Perfect spot for that. Back leg breaker. Give him a swing over the top of it. Victor has his mouthpiece. Not deep enough. One down. Here's a look at tonight's University of Kansas Hospital injury report. Jason Vargas rehab continues. Pitching at double A. Two and a third innings. Three runs. A couple of strikeouts. 42 pitches. 27 strikes. There you go. Good for him. We've been sitting around watching a long time. And it doesn't sound like no matter what Vargas does that he'll pitch for the Royals this year. Just want him to get back on the mound, right. get that arm strength back, and then have an offseason to recover. Right, and build on it. Get some strength. J.D. Martinez had two hits against Giordano Ventura. Both singles to center field. Cuthbert diving play. Long throw. And Hosmer did everything he could to help him out. With that swipe by Hosmer, he swiped that ball all the way to the Royals dugout and Drew Butera was in pursuit making sure it didn't go in the dugout. What a play by Chesler. He had a chance. Watch out. He catches it. He didn't take a crow hop. He doesn't have time. He just fires it. That's some arm strength. Haas. Good try with the Ole. Highlight. Highlight a pick. Yeah, he's trying to pick that no throw or no step at all. Just unloaded on it. And almost highlighted into the Royals dugout. So J.D. Martinez, he earned that one. Third hit on the night. And now Upton hits for the first time. Upton took over in left field for Collins in the top half of this inning. He is 0 for 7 in the series. Upton's a lane ball candidate. He's ground into 14. Strom did it to Miggy. He could do it again here. Not on that pitch. He's got to stay down. Just outside, two and one. Tiger closer Francisco Rodriguez getting ready for the ninth. Three and one. Full count. Royals in the ninth. We'll have Cuthbert, Kane, and Hosmer. JD Martinez has got one steal. I don't know if Hosmer is going to throw him. See Pete Moreland warming up out there in that bullpen. Strikes out a lot of him. I doubt he sends it.
Upton is one for his last 30. Struck him out. That's 139 strikeouts for Upton. And they are letting him have it. The Traveling Hall of Fame Tour We Are Baseball is now open through this Sunday in the Kauffman Stadium parking lot. The exhibit features artifacts like Jackie Robinson's World Series cap and Babe Ruth's 714th home run ball, plus taking a custom IMAX movie, a cutting edge virtual reality experience. And you can design your personal Hall of Fame plaque. Just show your Royals ticket at the tour box office to receive a $10 adult ticket and two free children tickets. Again, open through Sunday. Up and away to McGee. He is 0 for 3. I'd like to go out there. I haven't had a chance to. Thought about it, and Utera wants to get Strom back on track. Says he might be rushing out of that delivery a little bit. Kind of keep it a little bit more compact. Stay right down here with me here. And really, the pitch that Upton struck out on was out of the strike zone. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pulling off the shoulder. A little bit too quick. Better. It's the importance of catcher going out and reminding the pitcher. You know, you're you're not thinking out there. They're like hitters. You can't think. You got in this game. You got to just you know muscle memory and react. And every once in a while, that's the catcher's job, pitching coach's job, to go out there and adjust them a little bit. Field. Strom gets it to the ninth in a tie game. Royals won, Tigers won. Cuthbert, Kane, and Hosmer are coming up. Way to go, Matt. Hannibal Sanchez took a no hitter into the seventh inning. In fact, didn't give up a hit until two outs in the seventh inning. Giordano Ventura allowed just one run in six and a third. And Ian Kennedy, Danny Duffy, and Giordano Ventura, the Royals' three starters, have been superb in this Tiger series. Victor Martinez homered in the second inning. 
And the Tigers led 1-0 until Alex Gordon homered on the first pitch of the eighth. Nice. Back-to-back -back nights for Alex Gordon hitting homers. I love it. Ninth and tenth. Only thing missing uh, from Matt Strom is a W. He's got no decisions so far in his six appearances. Cutter is outside to Cuthbert. He was 0 for 3 against Sanchez with a couple of strikeouts. Green came on in the eighth and faced Paulo Orlando getting the final out. Slider for a strike, and it's one and one. Shane Green, little slider happy. That was a good one to hit there. Stayed up. Back to the cutter. That's a nasty pitch. Yeah, he was a comfort. Made it look like it was a changeup. He's way out in front of it. Cutter, slider, cutter, slider. When was Lorenzo Kane's last home run? May 31st. Lorenzo is 0 for 3 tonight. Going to have to get a slider up. That's all he's throwing. Like that? Yeah, just like that. Lorenzo would like a do-over. 0 for 6. Gets green. That's belt high, right over the middle of the plate. Lorenzo pulled off of it. Two and one. Can you hear that noise? Listen carefully before the pitch comes to Kane. Lorenzo likes to take his hands on and off the bat, and you can hear it sticking to the bat. Listen. I might need some hearing aids. You can't hear that? Two and two. Okay, now they, they, they turn the field mic up. Now I can hear it. Let's see. Loosening and tightening his grip with both hands just to keep his hands loose. Kane is on with one out. There you go. That's what you do. You figure that out. Slider, slider, slider. You know, your best chance is just wait on it and go with it. It's hard to hook those if they're middle away. And that was a fastball at 96. Good swing. That was a line drive. That wasn't exactly a low cane triangle shot. He didn't dump it in there, but that's right in the area he likes to hit it. Go ahead, run on for Eric Hosmer. He put an end to Hannibal Sanchez no hit bid with a two out double in the seventh inning. Cutter in on him, no balls, one strike. Haas had some success against Green, probably a lot of those as a starter. He started earlier this season. Jane Green was in the rotation. It's quick home. Got a, got a little slide step.
So he's quick to the plate and then you have McCann behind the plate who has the highest caught stealing percentage in the major leagues and he's already thrown out a runner tonight. Yeah. Not a good combination to run on. Hit well to right field. That is gone. Eric Hosmer with a two run blast in the ninth inning. And the Royals who were without a base hit until two outs in the seventh have a three one lead in the ninth. Jeez and crackers he jumped all over that one. That ball had topspin on it. What a clutch homer. Why would you want to try to steal a base when you got a guy like Haas who can carry you. Yeah. Nice to see the boys back and using the home run ball. Oh that's beautiful. Matt Strom. Like your chances. Sweet. Look at the energy in that dugout in quote unquote the dog days. There's no dog days with this team here right now. They're catching their, their second wind. They're making up for lost ground in July. <laughs> That's Escobar's. That uh, that mantis needs to be tested. Yeah, it looks like it's increased in size. That was had topspin on it. He was all over that. I mean, you got to really hit that ball hard to get it over the wall out there at 385 with topspin. And now it's 3 and 0 on Morales. Well, Hosmer only has three hits. <laughs> Does Montessi know that's there? He only has three hits in this series. They're all extra base hits. But looking at my scorecard in this series I have one hard hit out after another. So not a lot of hits but that's not very reflective of how hard he's hit the ball in this series. No but that smile sure is telling you how happy he is. What a relief late putting the pressure on the Tigers offense. Kelvin Herrera's getting loose. Corner, that's a fair ball. And Morales is digging for two. So with one out, the Royals get a single, a home run, and a double. That's Kendry's first hit of the night. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. Fastball, 91 cutter. Yeah, he's got more in the tank, Shane Green does. But Haas, he took a, a step, he knew he hit it hard. But he wasn't sure with that top spin on it. Look at it. leg kick and all. Holds his breath. He tells me that he gets that from his mother, Ileana. You see Hosmer sometimes when he takes a swing and it looks like he's blowing his cheeks out. He says that's a hereditary thing his mom used to do. He got that from her. It worked. Shane Green's mouthpiece is going to have to clamp down on that. Take some of that tension away. Morales comes out after the double. Apparently Cuthbert's being a little rough with him. Dyson is running for him and now the Tigers are going to walk Alex Gordon. They're messing with Morales in there. You could hear a pin drop in cotton here at Comerica Park. Alex Homer in the eighth inning to tie the game at one, giving him an eight game hitting streak. And now Hosmer's home run gives the Royals the lead. The Royals didn't have a hit one hit for six and two thirds innings. They got a double in the seventh a 
home run and a triple in the eighth. And now a home run, a double, and a single in the ninth. Like a slow moving train tonight. Hey, grind it out. Doesn't matter. Just stay right there. I'll tell you what, the, the energy in that dugout right there is, is infectious. And it's infectious to people who are watching. Me included. I'm giddy. All of a sudden, my mood has changed to one home run. Now I'm like, wow, we got a chance to sweep them here. Three more outs to go. Look at that. Nice to see Alex smile. He'll take the intentional pass. His home run tied it up. It was a beauty. Oh and two on Escobar. He is 0 for 3 tonight. on the corner. Green has struck out two in the inning, but in between the strikeouts, a single, a home run, a double, and an intentional walk. And up comes Drew Butera. Kane singled, and then Hosmer homered. Down and away to Drew. 0 for 3 so far tonight. More than half of his hits this year have been for extra bases. Giving Salvador Perez the night off. It will be a very late night for the Royals. And then they play tomorrow against Minnesota. Two and 0. The Tigers, and it's been a tradition the past few years, all of their Thursday home games are day games. Every single one of them. It doesn't matter if it's the beginning of the series or the end of the series. Well, they're going to go home and sleep in their beds, but the Boston Red Sox are in Baltimore tonight. They are going to fly to Detroit all night, and then they have to get up and play a day game tomorrow. And they are not happy about it. Right. And you know Dave Dombrowski was their general manager here for the Tigers for a long time and now he's the Red Sox general manager and he called over thinking hey maybe they'll do me a favor and change that from a day game to a night game and the Tigers said no and didn't he, make Dave Dombrowski too happy he was he was their president and general manager so he was the one signing off on all those Thursday day games when he was here. And apparently the Orioles weren't interested in giving the Red Sox a day game for travel. Plus, there's a Lions game tomorrow. Like, that's the whole thing. I in mean, the evening. Right, yeah. in the evening. At nighttime, I mean, the facilities are right back up to one another. So it's not the Tigers' fault. You can't get on the Tigers for that. That's just too bad for the schedule for the Red Sox. They're not real happy. They had to fly to Cleveland a couple days ago for a one-game makeup. And then fly on, on to Baltimore, and now they're, you know, they're just getting the, the, the back end of the travel end of it. That, that's where the league needs to step in. There have to be certain circumstances where the league says, sorry. And I'm talking about the Orioles start time. Runners go, bloop to right, and down. Dyson scores easily. And the Royals have three in the ninth inning. Well, they, they are really having a good time in that dugout. And now, Lorenzo Kane, he's trying to get Butera to get a little, little hair flip here. But that little doinker worked nicely. A little added insurance for Herrera. He's going to come in. Try to shut it down. Slider, that's what you do. Cue it right off the end of the bat. Runners going.
There's the hair flip. Don't you wish we could do that? <laughs> I wish I could. It's been a while. <laughs> Shane Green leaves, and so do many of the fans. 4 1 See Royals. Ya. Wouldn't want to be you. A premier Mazda game break. This is Dansby Swanson, the first overall pick in the draft in 2015. And that's his first big league hit. So that's a thrill. And he grew up outside of Atlanta, drafted out of Vanderbilt by the Diamondbacks. And then the Diamondbacks traded him to the Braves this past off season, And he gets his first big league hit. And friends and family didn't have to travel very far to see it. Yeah. How about that? That's a great trade for him. Even though he's going to a rebuilding organization, it's where he grew up. Diamondbacks got a good pitcher in Shelby Miller for him. They did? They thought they did. Well, he was he was good. Yeah. He's, he's he, in the minor leagues right now. Right. Well that, you know, when the trade was made, they needed a, another starter. They gave him their hot shot. Mark Lowe with runners at first and third and facing Mondesi. Alex Gordon was intentionally walked. He's at third. Drew Butera just blooped a single. He's at first. 0 oh 2 on Mondesi. You know, for a team that's coming off winning the World Series, they've been loose this year, but not this loose. This is how they were playing last year and yeah. the year before. No, and, and this is welcomed. Oh, off of Lowe's foot. And the underhand toss is just in time. Royals get three. Biggest hit, Eric Hosmer's two run home run. Set the foot down. Get the nice swing. Pilot to Bombardier. Open up those doors. <laughs>
going into the eighth inning. They had one hit going into the eighth inning. This tied it up. Yeah. How about it? Looking for the first pitch, ambushed him. That's right, Alex Gordon staying hot. It's nice to see Alex hot and chest bumping and smiling and doing the job. Hosmer says, you know, enough of this. We're not staying here, here very much longer. With Kane on, who got a nice line drive base hit, Haas lined one over the wall, 17th on the year, and that was timely, especially for young rookie Matt Strong. Who stands to be the winning pitcher? Kelvin Herrera has a three run lead. And we'll get Jared Saltalamachia, a pinch hitter, Andrew Romine, and Ian Kinsler. Strike to Saltalamachia. The Tigers scored one run in game one on a solo home run. They scored one run in game two on a solo home run. That by Saul Tulamakia. Tonight, they have scored one run on a solo home run. That's it. Not a good groove that the Tigers are in right now, especially with their injuries. With the Red Sox coming in, and they're, they're high-powered offense. Now they may be a little sluggish, but from my experience, you play better when you're tired. You're more loose. You react quicker. So the, the Red Sox could be a little bit have a little bloodshot eyes and coming in from the East Coast, but they're not going to be uh, just just lay down here for the Tigers. So it's not going to be easy for Detroit. Herrera blow that fastball right by him. Slider and a change. 88. On the changeup, Slider's been magnificent pitch for him this year. Home plate umpire flinched. Romine is one for two with a sack. Too low, two balls, one strike. Herrera saved game one on Monday. That was a 3 1 game. Facing only three batters. That's right where he wants to stay, down in the zone. Two and two. Uh, how and about that? Are. There are many of them. <laughs> Look at that. But they are heard here yeah. tonight. Look at the Tigers fan and the Royals fan sitting there. The Tigers fans, he's a little bit embarrassed, saying, come on now. Oh, beauty. Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Club. Brian Lefevre, Rex Hudler, with Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery. With director Steve Kurtenbach, producer Joe Vencius, associate producer Sam Abramson, Dave Holtzman, and the producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. These guys all do a great job for us. Thank you, fellas. And wouldn't it only be appropriate if the Royals are going to sweep the Tigers in Detroit that the final out be recorded by Ian Kinsler, who finds any way possible to beat the Royals, and he is hitless in this series. 0 for 9. Popped up. And the Royals sweep the Tigers in Detroit. The Royals have now won four in a row. They have won seven of eight and nine of their last 11 games, and they are back to 500. Yes. Hallelujah. Way to go, Haas and company. Ventura again with a solid start. Matt Strom, rookie, picks up 
his first win. Weren't a lot of hits, but they were timely. The Royals are finding that mojo, and it's time to get on the bus and forget about us. So 60 and 60. Royals also picked up three games on the Tigers. You got to get to second place before you get to first. That's exactly right. In one day at a time. Look at Strom. He's coming in focused with that fastball blazing. Huge. Bases loaded. Double play. He induced with Cabrera. Struck out Upton. Strom with 12 strikeouts now in six innings pitched, or a little over six. Fantastic job. First big league win. He'll take it. And the Royals are now nine and four against the Tigers this year, four and two here at Comerica Park. Let's go down to the field, and here's Joel. And the two left handed swinging home run hitters going deep last night and tonight. Alex Gordon, Eric Hosmer. First off, Haas breaking up the no hitter. You've seen him for many years, Anibal Sanchez. How, how nerve wracking was that starting to get? Uh, it's like I told you earlier, you know, we were trying to attack him early. He was throwing a lot of first pitch strikes and really wasn't missing over the plate uh, any other time. So uh, just try to get a good pitch, put a good swing on it, and see what happens. Well, I'll see who wants it here. Gordo will take it. There we go. Let's see. Alex is Nebraska tough, so that's no big deal. All right, Haas, last question uh, real quick, then to be able to put up those homers late, getting to their bullpen, Gordo, and then you. Yeah, uh, you know, Gordo with a big swing there to even things out, really took a lot of pressure off us. And, um, you know, once Annabelle got out of the game, we knew we had a chance. We knew we had to get some guys on, try and make some things happen, and it uh, worked out. I will let you go and uh, visit now with Alex Gordon. Let me get some of this off of here. I know you're, you're a cold-weather guy. You can handle it, but that, that does get very cold. Tell me about just getting Sanchez out of that game first pitch and suddenly you're back in it. Yeah, he pitched well tonight. Uh, he was hitting his spots both sides of the plate and really had his changeup working. So, um, you know, his pitch count was up. So once Osmer got the hit, we were able to get him out of there and uh, uh, go to work on their bullpen. I think our guys were saying up in the booth that through all the ups and downs this year, the team's been relaxed for a defending world champion. But maybe you look even more relaxed than all you're right now. What's the feeling in there? Oh, we're just feeling good. We're having fun uh, playing together right now. And, you know, the atmosphere in the dugout was great today. I mean, he was throwing no hit through, you know, the first six, seven innings. And, you know, nobody was panicking. No one talked about it. We knew we were going to get it done. And, um, you know, it just took a matter of time to, to get it there. How about for you personally? I know what a grind it has been this year. You told me the other day, until I do it for a bunch of days in a row, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. Now you have been. Well, I got a lot of making up to do, so <laughs> uh, hopefully I can finish strong the rest of the year and uh, make it a quality season. Great job tonight. Uh, thank you. Alex Gordon, Eric Hosmer, and the first Royals sweep of three games in Detroit since September of 2008. That's a long time ago. And the Royals, who are not known for their power, they hit four home runs last night and two huge late home runs tonight. A, an ice bath from Salvi and a sweep. <laughs>